Hey, this is Donnie Smith, and welcome to this Friday, friendly Friday Q&A. Now, we're away from the home, and we've got a real slow internet connection here. It's, uh, so I was afraid to do that hangout the way we usually do it, so we're just doing it with an iPhone and going to post it up from that. But anyway, uh, we're attending a wedding, and we're at my mom's house, but we're still going to do this Q&A on the last video, which is repairing dents and body lines using this new tool, the stud leveler. Now, I believe in the video I was calling it uh, leveler, but it's lever. You know, stud lever. But anyway, that doesn't really matter. But anyway, we're going to talk about that and answer your questions. So what is the first question we have, Jay? Live one says, Donnie, is the stud lever very expensive? Um, you know, if it's something, I don't think it's too bad. I don't think it's too expensive. It's about 45 to $50. Dollars. Um, you know, depending on how many dents you, you repair. If it's one, you know, uh, you know, just a couple a year, you know, probably it is expensive. Well, on a daily basis, it wouldn't be. So that just kind of, you know, depends on how much are you going to use that. But I tell you what, you know, I appreciate I see your comments on there all the time. I know you're always watching my videos and commenting on my videos. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to message you to get your email address, and I'm going to send you a gift card where you can go onto uh, my website, and you can try one of these. And I'll give you instructions and all that, how to get that. But I'll... I'll send you a gift card, and if you know that's not what you want, that's fine too. I mean, the gift card would be for fifty dollars because that will cover it, and you know you can get whatever you want. But anyway, just just out of appreciation to my viewers and for you always leaving these comments, I really appreciate it, and uh, I'm you know I'll, I'll get that sent to you. So anyway, thanks again for watching the videos, and and uh, it's forty five to fifty dollars. Uh, well, y'all leave us a comment. Do you, do you you know how, how do you think that price is? You know, leave us go down in the comment section. Leave us some comment. I'd like to hear what you think. Next Mike, question, Mike McKay. That's a neat tool. It is neat. I, I thought it was pretty cool. Now I've really used one similar to that. Just not. I haven't had one with a dip pulling system with a stud nail gun. You know, the one that has the use reusable electrodes, the big dip systems. You know, they all have that, and it works good. So it's uh, not like it's totally new, or I've never used one like that. It's just uh, the first time I had one that. That it works with a stud welder gun. I think it's pretty cool. It works good. Thanks for uh, commenting on that. Jeff Shant says, "Good video, Donnie." And again, I you know I appreciate you for watching. You leave a lot of comments, and and uh, if you're watching this, go and check out his channel. Uh, he's working on a Mustang, and he that he's restoring. He's got some awesome videos as well. So thanks for uh, thanks for watching. Stroke Mustang sixty six says. Was taught when I ain't that school for body fluid. You know, that's a good point. Uh, and I always like to teach students to try to get it within an eighth or less. But according to the technical data sheet, like from 3M and Everco, it states on there that it needs to be within a quarter of an inch after sanded. So most of your body fillers, that's what they recommend. Now, I personally would like to have it within an eighth. But, you know, that's just my opinion. I hate giving out, you know, some of my, just my opinion sometimes without... Uh, data facts to, to uh, support that. So, according to the technical data sheets, most of them say a quarter of an inch. But, eighth inch, that's even better. And that's what I'd shoot for. And what we're talking about, how thick is the body filler? Uh, you know, on the video I said that uh, you shouldn't have more than a, a quarter of an inch after it's sanded. And uh, he was taught eighth inch. And that's fine. You know, that's what I try to shoot for as well. But, uh, anyway, uh, technical data sheets recommend up to a quarter but the less the better so anyway thanks for commenting and thanks for bringing that to my attention SW Pilot Trey says great video please try to make them shorter but still informative thanks for making them I, yeah I, I realize this video was a little bit longer than most of mine I used to try to keep them around 10 minutes this one was a uh, I think were about 20. But there's just a lot of stuff to try to cram into there. And uh, I didn't really, I wanted to get all this in one video, you know, get the whole idea and concept and not try to break break it into different videos. But, you know, I understand what you're saying. We're all limited on time. And I'll definitely try to work on keeping those, you know, about 10 minutes or less. So anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for your suggestions. Cassie Winters, JCW, says, great, dem great demo. An off-subject question about the under underside of the roof. I pulled the, the headliner 
out of our 66 Mustang and found a lot of surface rust. What is the best way to stop the rust? The same type of rust is found on the inside of doors and backside of quarter panels, places that are difficult to reach. Thought about POR 15, should it, should it be sanded first? What about places that can't be reached to sand? Thanks, Cassie. Well, you know, Cassie, I have a video. We've already done this. We just haven't had it edited and uploaded yet. We did it on our floor. We reused the POR 15. And I recommend sanding the best you can in the places you can and uh, using something like the POR 15 system, you know, to get the rest of it. Now, one option to that that, you know, would work really well, we, did, we didn't do it, but is, you know, if you had all that sandblasted, and then come in with like POR 15 and coat all that. I mean, that's going to give you the best results. But uh, if you're like us, didn't have the resources to do that at the time, uh, yeah, POR 15, you know, that system, and we'll have a video on that soon, you know, that, that would work fine. The places you can't reach, uh, you know, you just get what you can off this rust. You know, we tried to get every bit we could possible, but, you know, with rust and the pits in it, you're not going to get every bit of it out. But uh, this POR, POR 15, it worked well for us. And, Probably within the next couple of weeks, we'll have a video for you. So keep watching, and we should have a, a video where we actually use this POR-15. So, uh, POR-15, I think I rushed all that together. But anyway, kind of trying to hurry so we won't use up a lot of your time, and and uh, try to keep this short, because I don't think I can upload with YouTube to YouTube if it's more than 9 or 10 minutes. So, anyway, with the iPhone. So anyway, that wraps up this one. Again, I appreciate everybody for watching. Uh, and, uh, and Lyle, I'll, I'll message you uh, maybe Monday before I get that done, but I'll you know, get you that gift certificate, and you can try that, this tool out if you'd like. Anyway, thanks for watching, and, and uh, we'll have another video for, video for you Tuesday.